Hey gang, it is Tuesday, May 22nd, 2018, and this is Brooklyn Pony Part 18. Um, in the previous video, I showed how I used the wheel fit, uh, tire fit kit uh, in order to determine the true fitment up front on the suspension. And I did some modifications to that, had to deal with the um, Mustangs to Fear bracing that I put in there. But I think that's everything's figured out now in the front, and I'm happy with it. So I wanted to move on to the back. And as you can see, the car is on the lift. And I've got everything in place underneath, um, including the brake rotors, the shocks, all the uh, frame connectors, the inner support brace structure, along with the uh, torque tube. And I don't have the chunk in place. Don't need it. Um, I have the axles blocked up in their position. And so everything is fitting up really nice. I did have to go through the holes to get the powder coating out of the holes, but that's you know that's to be expected. So at this point, what I what I've done is I've measured from the bottom of the car, from fixed locations, to the floor to make sure everything is sitting level or within a reasonable measurement, in this case about a sixteenth of an inch. And then I measured uh, various places using other fixed points. Um, I put the rotors on, I used the bottom edge of the rotor, I used the bottom edge of these, this bracket here, uh, same thing on both sides, and I'm really within about a sixteenth of an inch overall, and I'm happy with that. Now I will point out that uh, with installing this pan hard bar, and the instructions don't tell you to do this, but uh, in order to get this rear end centered and left to right based on uh, a simple measurement off of the uh, bumper bracket here, or the bump stop would be, to the rotor, um, I had to actually shorten the pan hard bar uh, about a half an inch because as you can see, there's a little bit of thread showing there now, and there's a little bit of thread showing there. Previously, um, with it the extra half inch, I could not make any more adjustments. With it fully compressed or rotated in, let's say, uh, it was bottomed down on both ends and it wasn't within you know, zero, let's say left and right. So I cut off that half inch, that took care of it, and now everything is nice, it's, it's centered. And what I can show you is and I'm doing this with only one hand. Normally I would press that rotor against the uh, axle. But basically, we're looking at three inches. I know the tape is upside down, but three inches on either side. And again, three inches. So it's centered left to right, and also my up and down measurements. And what I've also done is I've loosened up the uh, adjusting nuts on the spring so that when the car comes down as it will and I use a jack underneath it to elevate the housing I have some room to play with because I really didn't want to take the shocks all the way off again but if I have to I will and I'll pull the springs out which is not that hard to do but that'll allow that uh, to move up and down a lot easier so at this point uh, I am going to set up I have I still have the setup for what I had on the front which ended up being uh, a seven and a half inch wheel width and of course this is a 17 inch diameter and also a uh, four and a half inch back spacing and I will set that on the car and I wanted to point out something else um, I talked to the owner of the company for wheel fit who also developed this tool and he told me that these measurements out here you need to, in this case I'm using a seven and a half inch width on the rim and he said I should set this up for the outer to be on eight and a half. What that does is it actually gives you a buffer um, because if you set this up on the exact width like I was doing earlier on, on, the, on part 17 if you set it up exactly then you might have some side play in the, in the tire and it may actually not be completely accurate so by going the you know setting this up on this external 
at eight and a half, it gives you that buffer. It actually pushes it out a little bit more and then it allows some tolerance. And he built that into the system as kind of a, a, a buffer zone, let's say. So I just wanted to point that out. If you're doing this and you're doing that adjustment, you know, if I'm using a seven and a half inch width, I'm actually going to push it out the external bracket to eight and a half. So, but I'm going to get started uh, setting this up. I'm going to lower the car and get the get this configuration mounted and we'll see what it looks like. Now before I get too far ahead of myself I wanted to show you how it looks with that same configuration that I had on the front on the back and as you can see there's a little bit of room left um, and I also wanted to point this out I did notice that because there's not a lot of tension on this tire because uh, based on a seven and a half inch rim width it really doesn't put a lot of tension on this uh, by the tool so you'll you may see it slide a little bit as you rotate it around so I just put some clamps on the edge and that keeps it from sliding around that way I can maintain a uh, the same pattern all the way around as I as I turn it uh, just just a little a little tip that might help you out um, I know it's helping me out but uh, at this point this tire is pretty close to maybe the limits and the reason I say that without doing too much on the offset yet I've only got a little bit of space I don't know if you can see that very well there's only a little bit of space right here now I can I can dolly that back a little bit and create maybe another quarter inch which I'll probably do regardless but I just wanted to point that out um, you know these cars were not meant for big tires so a lot of custom work would have to you know take place mini tubs or whatever uh, to put a really fat tire under here that or you know as people have suggested on the other video using uh, uh, a fender wheel roller tool that you mount to the hub and you can roll these quarters and it'll bulge them out a little bit and you can do it on the front fenders as well but I'm not really looking to do that so anyway this is where it's at at this moment and what I'm gonna do is uh, lower the car down and then use the jack to elevate the differential okay so I wanted to show you how this looked um, this configuration is the 22545 ZR17 as I had on the front and I talked to the owner we decided to set it up with four and a half inch backspacing and an eight inch wide wheel and you can see it has clearance there at the top um, this is roughly with no uh, load on the suspension and the car sitting as low as I can get it so the idea was the tire is just just missing the floor so I can still turn it but again there's no load the jack is just sitting there it has a little bit on it um, just to get the uh, uh, a little bit of space under the tire so I can rotate it but this is basically what's going to be what I would say ride height and I did some test fitting with without using the wheel fit tool but using the tire itself here on the other side this is the two uh, uh, what was it 245 yeah 245 40 ZR17 now the problem with this it's very close to hitting the lip and again I've talked to the owner we have no plans of using you know a roller tool to push the wheel wells out I want to keep it looking stock and don't want to modify anything but the bigger deal with this tire is the fact that it's actually rubbing on the um, inside of the wheelhouse I don't know if I can get this camera in there to show you but let's see so that's that's up against the wheelhouse there's no more room there even if I dolly that out a little bit which I will there's just not enough room the end result is we're not going to use either of these bigger tires um, there's just not enough space to make it happen and I think this one's gonna fit just fine now again I'm gonna jack that up 
and see how that goes up into the wheelhouse, but I don't see it being a problem. Now that's actually lifting the car in the air and still have clearance and the tire rotates no problem so oh and I should point out that we also decided to go with the 8 inch wide um, rims front and rear there's enough room up front and I can play with the suspension if I need to to try to give it a little more room and I think it's going to be just fine with the 8 inch so Four and a half inch back spacing, eight inch rims, 17 inch tire, 225, uh, 45 ZR17 is this tire, I think. Where's the sticker? There it is. Yeah, 225, 45 ZR17. So, I think we're good. I want to show you one more thing. I moved the jack outboard under the housing and just jacked up this side so it tilted the axle housing as far as it would go until it actually started lifting the car off of the lift and it clears nothing rubs so I'm happy with that that's gonna be a that's a real good sign there I mean it has plenty of room I did want to point out as well that in order for this, as I said earlier, to be an 8 inch rim, I set it out at 9 inches for this outer piece to be in line with. So that's how the system is set up and it seems to work just fine. He did want me to point out that if you're looking at an 8 inch wide rim, which in this case, this is an 8 inch, considered an 8 inch wide uh, wheel you would use the outside dimension which is nine inches when setting up that tool so I think that'll be it this will be a shorter video obviously um, just showing you the details and how this stuff works and I did find out from the owner that this TCI kit is actually a two inch drop I was concerned with how low this car was sitting and I was comparing it to a 65 coupe and I thought man this car is really low for some reason well he said it's got a two inch drop built in so that really explains a lot um, it looks really cool having that light down there of course you can't have that all the time but you know anyway so that'll be it for this video I hope you found it useful um, again if you like the video give me a thumbs up some people want to give me a thumbs down I understand that's that's fine too um, but uh, if you would share the video and I guess I'll put a subscribe button over there where Iron Man is. And then, of course, some sort of a secondary link to a playlist. So, uh, as usual, thanks for watching.